Hello everyone, welcome to Allen Digital. Today in physics, we are going to discuss about electrostatic equilibrium. We have already studied uh, majorly about electrostatics and equilibrium, wherein we have studied electrostatics is nothing but when you study about charges which are at rest and the mechanics related to it, that is known as electrostatics. And the equilibrium term we have already studied in 11th class also in laws of motion. Equilibrium is any condition of a body uh, at which the net force acting on the body is zero. Actually, even rotational equilibrium is also uh, included in your normal equilibrium but here we'll only take care of the net force equal to zero equilibrium so overall equilibrium can be of two types we know that under equilibrium condition we can have two states what are those two states either the body will be at rest or uniform motion therefore on the basis of their upcoming motions or state of motions we have two categories of equilibrium let's see what that is First one is your static equilibrium. The second one is known as dynamic equilibrium. In static equilibrium, all the system that we are going to study about here, our system is system of charges, those would be at rest. Second type of equilibrium is dynamic equilibrium. In dynamic equilibrium, what will happen? The system when, which we are studying, which is nothing but system of charges here, that will be in motion. But which type of motion? Uniform motion. So we have already studied this, that the natural state of any body, if there is no external force acting on it or the net force is zero on the body, then the natural state is nothing but either rest or uniform motion. And hence, on the basis of that, we have categorized equilibrium into two parts. So here we'll be studying majorly about static equilibrium in which we'll be studying about charges at rest. So let's start. We'll start with a small example and then we'll move on to certain other aspects of the same kind of problems. So let's look at the first kind of problem which is there, where and what charge should be placed so that the whole system remains in static equilibrium. So we can have multiple charges also here, but we are taking the most basic case. If you have understood this case, rest all the cases would be very much easier for you. So we have two charges here. Please note that here the charges, two charges which are kept in the system, both the charges are positive in nature. Although their magnitudes are uh, different, but regardless of that, their nature is different. So we are doing the first case where two charges are kept in a space and both have same nature. Both are either positive or negative for both the type of cases, the same mechanics is valid. So we have two charges here. We have to find that where a third charge should be placed such that the third charge plus these two charges, all three are in equilibrium. Now see, we can keep the charge anywhere. I can keep it here, I can keep it here, I can keep it there, I can keep it up, I can keep it down. So I have to choose such a point where the net force on that third charge plus the net force on all the other charges also become zero. So let's see, we'll do it by hit and trial method. So this is just for your explanation. Once this is done, after that, whatever problems you apply, you don't need to do it over and over again. You can always uh, just take the conclusion from here, whatever conclusion we are making, and you can extend it to your problem as well. So let's start, we are having this charge. So I am taking a third charge here. Let's say that is small q. So small q can be present in either of these three regions, one, two, or three. See, up and down though is not possible. Net force cannot be zero up and down region. The only three possible regions is outside the separation and inside the separation. So we'll take the first case. I'm taking a positive charge here by default, but here you can take any other charge also. So what do we have to find here? We have to find there is a third charge. We have to find where it should be placed. That is, we have to find its position. Second, we have to find its nature. Third, we have to find its magnitude. These are the three things you have to find. So out of all the three, first I'm starting with the position. We'll start with this first. Then we'll move on to the nature and the magnitude. So let's start with the first one, position. Let's assume I'm keeping a positive charge here somewhere, some test charge this is. I'm keeping a charge here. Now, if the whole system is in equilibrium, then definitely the third charge which is kept, that also will experience zero force. So what we are going to do is, we are going to draw the net force on this third charge due to this capital Q and this 4Q. So let's call this as first charge and this as second charge. Now, this third charge is going to experience an electrostatic force given by the Coulombic force or Coulomb's law, K, Q1, Q2 divided by R square. This force will be either positive or it will be negative, depending on whether repulsion is happening or 
attraction is happening. So let's start with the first charge. So you can say this is positive charge. If this is positive charge, this is going to repel this charge because by default, this is my positive charge, right? Now, repulsion happens. If repulsion happens, they will both push each other away from each other. So what is going to happen? The force due to plus Q on Q will be in this direction. That is F1 vector. Come to second charge. This is 4Q charge. If this is positive and this is also positive, so this small q will be repelled by this 4q as well. So what we are going to do, this is going to again repel this. If this is also going to repel this, then you can see that the net force which is acting on this q charge, both the forces are in the same direction. And if both the forces are in the same direction, it cannot be in equilibrium. In order for any charge or any body to be in equilibrium, net force should be zero. That is, if there is a force in the left side, there should be another force which is acting on the right side direction, which are cancelling out each other, hence giving you an equilibrium condition. So, this is not possible, this position. Same happens if you take a point here. Let's put a small q charge at that point. Same will happen. 4q will also repel it. Small q will also repel it. So, this is also repulsive force. This is also repulsive force. So, this position is also not possible for equilibrium for the third charge. Now, let's come to somewhere in between. Look at this position. Now, this Q will repel it. F1 will be in this direction. Similarly, that 4Q that you are having, that is also going to repel it. So, you can see there is a possibility of having equilibrium here because the net force can be zero here. So, what we are going to do? Now, by default, you can everywhere, in every question, assume this position, wherever you have two charges will, which are like in nature, regardless of whether they are uh, same in magnitude or not. Here, both of them are not same in magnitude, but their nature is same, both are positive. If both were negative, minus Q, minus 4Q, then also the point will be assumed as in the separation itself. So, this is the point that I have considered. So, what we are going to do is, we are going to equate the net force here. Now, for that first, we have to assume certain distances. So, let's see how to solve it. So, we are going to assume here this third charge Q is somewhere in between, which is at a distance x from plus Q. So, from 4Q, how much distance would it be? Total is 2A separation, so 2A minus x. So, according to the question, this is an equilibrium. So, F1, this is my first charge, this is my second charge. So, according to the question, this is an equilibrium. Therefore, F1 and F2 must be equal in magnitude. Therefore, I can equate their magnitude F1 vector equal to F2 vector. Magnitudes are same. So, let us find out the magnitude using Coulomb's law. We know if there are two charges Q1 and Q2 which are at certain separations smaller from each other, then the force between both the charges will be K which is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 divided by separation square. Therefore, F1 can be written as what? F1 is the force between these two charges. So, I can write it as K, small q, capital Q, divided by x squared is equal to. Next, F1, uh, if you look at F2, F2 is the force between small q and 4q. So, K, small q, 4q, divided by distance between them is. Cancel out whatever is getting cancelled. These all things get cancelled out. I will be left with 1 divided by x square is equal to 4 divided by 2a minus x whole square. Right? Now, if you look at all the terms, they are uh, somewhere or the other square root of something. So, what we are going to do is we are going to take square root on both the sides. Take square root, what will you be left with? You will be left with 1 by x is equal to 2 divided by 2a minus x. Cross multiply it, you will get 2x is equal to 2a minus x. So, 3x is equal to 2a. Value of x comes out to be 2a divided by 3. This is the value of x. x is what? x is the distance of equilibrium point from Small, uh, capital Q. Now, here remember that whenever you are given with any question in your NEET exam, you will be given in such a problem given with multiple options. So, in the multiple options, they will give you the distance if this is 2a by 3, from which charge? Capital Q charge. So, from 4Q charge, what will be the distance? So, from capital Q charge, the distance is 2a by 3. 
So from 4q charge, what is the distance? Let's find it out. It will be 2a minus x. 2a minus 2a by 3. So this will be 6a minus 2a by 3. That is 4a by 3. Both the options will be given to you in the exam. And there would be a, a last option of the fourth option that is both 1 and 2. So always make sure whenever you get such kind of a question, you check all the options and then see which all are the correct ones. Always make sure the position should be considered from both the charges. Because we never know examiner is going to uh, take the distance from which charge. So you take any one as the reference but calculate it with respect to the other also. Next thing, look at this separation. This is 2a by 3 from charge of lesser magnitude and 4a by 3 from charge of greater magnitude. From this what we can conclude is whenever you have, this is true for even unlike charges also, whether you have like charges or unlike charges. Whatever uh, equilibrium point you get, the equilibrium point always lies near to the charge which has smaller magnitude. So even if you are having both negative, don't uh, look at the sign to consider uh, whether it is small or uh, big, you always have to consider the magnitude, whichever has lesser magnitude. For example, if it is minus capital Q minus 4Q, then also equilibrium point will be here only near to the minus Q charge because it has lesser magnitude. So always you have to check where the lesser magnitude lies near to that you will be having your equilibrium point. So this is all about your position. Next, we will move on to the magnitude and uh, the magnitude or the sign of the charge. So to calculate the value of magnitude and sign of the charge, what we do is again we will assume initially first it is positive, then we will check the mechanics, then we will assume it is negative, then we will check the mechanics. So for that what we will first do is we will keep a charge wherever it was placed. Initially you can see here we have taken the equilibrium position. So take the assume the charge here only. Initially I am assuming positive charge itself. Now here what you can see is Whenever you are considering the magnitude and sign of the third charge, you have to consider the equilibrium of the other two charges, not the third charge. Because if you consider the third charge's equilibrium, what will happen? When you equate the forces, small q gets cancelled out, then how will you find the value of q? Therefore, always consider the equilibrium of other two charges in order to find out the magnitude and sign of this charge. So what I am going to suppose initially is that it is positive charge. If this is positive charge, now according to the question, the entire system is equilib in equilibrium, which means each and every charge is in equilibrium. Therefore, Q charge should also be in equilibrium, 4Q charge should also be in equilibrium if I keep a positive charge here. Let's see what happens. So let's consider now, this is first charge, second charge, third charge. Now if you consider the equilibrium of Q charge, on Q charge, Small q charge and 4q charge will apply force. Let's see in what direction. So if this is positive, this will repel it. So F3 will be in this direction. What about force due to 4q charge? 4q charge will also repel this. So you can see that this charge will not be in equilibrium. But according to question, this must be in equilibrium. Right? So this cannot be positive charge. So positive charge nature is not possible for this charge. Next. We will assume that this is having a negative charge. Let us put a negative charge here instead of positive. So, I am putting a min minus q charge here. If this is minus q charge, what will happen? This will attract it. So, direction of F3 will be in this direction. Whereas, 4q will repel this charge. Therefore, direction of F2 will be in this direction. So, you can see there is a possibility of equilibrium of plus q charge. Next, let us move on to 4q. On this 4q, this minus q will apply charge and this plus q will apply charge. So minus q will attract it, F3 is in this direction and plus q will repel this one. So F1 is in this direction. So you can see there is a possibility of equilibrium if the charge is negative in nature. So one thing that we have understood is the nature of the charge. The third charge must be a negative charge. Next, magnitude. To calculate the magnitude of this charge, we will consider again the equilibrium of any one of these charges. So what we are going to do is, I am going to take the uh, value of this charge, the equilibrium of this charge. So if equilibrium of this charge, you see, magnitude of these two forces should be equal. That is magnitude of F1 should be equal to magnitude of F3 here. 
So what is magnitude of F1? F1 is the force applied by this Q charge on 4Q. That will be how much? K capital Q 4Q divided by what is the separation? Distance between both of them 2A. 2A whole square is equal to. Next is F3. F3 is uh, the force of attraction between both of them. We are just equating the magnitude. You can ignore the negative sign. So you will get K into Q 4Q divided by what was this separation? We calculated it as 4A by 3. So ca just uh, cancel out whatever is getting cancelled out. K gets cancelled. A gets cancelled inside. You will be uh, cancelling Q also. And 4 also. You will be left with Q divided by 2 square means 4 is equal to. This will be nothing but small Q divided by 4 by 3 means 16, this is 9. So, this will be nothing but 4. So, from here, magnitude of Q comes out to be how much? 4 capital Q by 9. Now, we know that this charge must be negative because that is what we calculated from the logic we applied here. Therefore, the charge which is placed for the equilibrium of the entire system will be nothing but minus 4 Q by 9. So, you can see here in this entire problem, everything in this one problem we have covered, we have calculated the nature of charge which is to be kept and where it is to be kept, that is the position we have calculated and the magnitude of it. So, overall in conclusion, what we have to do is whenever you are calculating the position, always remember the position of equilibrium point will lie in between the separation if both the charges are like in nature, whether both are positive or both are negative. And where will it be? Closer to the charge which has lesser magnitude. That is one thing. Second thing, whenever you are finding out the nature and the magnitude of this third charge, make sure you consider the equilibrium of the other two charges which are present in the system and not the third charge. So, that is all about electrostatic equilibrium for today. Thank you everyone. I hope all of you have understood the lecture.